This video is going to take you through your half equations homework. You should use it if you are struggling with this and you should use it to correct your work. Do try correcting it yourself first. See if you can identify where you've gone wrong with the prompts that I've given you and see if you can fix it by yourself, but then use this to check your answers. So the first example we're given is magnesium ion um, converting into a magnesium atom. So we've got to get our equation the right way around first of all. So we take some time to write our reactants into our product. So we're starting with a magnesium ion. So I know magnesium has the symbol Mg. It's an ion, so I know it's a charged particle. I look to my periodic table. Magnesium's in group two, which means it forms an ion with a charge of plus two. But when we're writing the formula, we normally write two plus rather than plus two. That's converting into a magnesium atom. We can tell by the fact that it says atom that there's only going to be one of them. It's not Mg2. And plus we know that magnesium's not diatomic. So it's just Mg, uh, the symbol for the element. And it's an atom, which means it's not charged. We can see that it's balanced in terms of the atoms. We only have one atom of magnesium on the left and one on the right. So now we have to think about the charge. Well, on the left hand side, we can see the total charge is plus two. On the right hand side, I have no charge and my magnesium atom has no charge. So the charge is zero. So now I want to balance my equation by adding in electrons. Electrons, we give the symbol E minus, that's for our electrons, and they have a charge of minus one. So what they're going to do is if I put them on one side of the equation, that's going to bring the charge of that side of the equation down by one because it's minus one. So I need to ask myself at this point, well, what side needs to come down in charge to match the other one? If I added them to the right hand side, um, for example, here, if I added two electrons here, that would bring the charge down by two and my overall charge would actually be minus two. But I don't want that. That just brings it further away from the left hand side. So again, go back to that question. Which side needs to go down in charge to meet the other one? And that's obviously the left hand side. It's plus two and it needs to come down to zero. So I add in electrons on the left hand side and then think about how many I need. Make sure you don't change the charge in the electrons. Some people are writing E2 minus because they know we need to have a charge of minus two to cancel out the plus two. Um, but that does not work. Electrons do not have a charge of minus two. So we've got to keep them as E minus and then think about, well, how many do we need to um, make sure the charge is balanced overall? So um, we can see that our left hand side needs to come down by a charge of two. So I need to add in two electrons. Let's have a think about the charge in the left hand side and make sure it's right. So you can see that I have a charge of plus two from my magnesium ion and a charge of minus two from my electrons. And that gives me an overall charge of zero. So that is now a balanced half equation. Okay, next one is a sulfide ion into a sulfur atom. So again, sulfide ion is S with whatever charge it is from its grip. Sulfur is in grip six, so it forms an ion with a charge of two minus. That's forming a sulfur atom, which is just given the symbol S, no charge, um, and it's not diatomic. Let's count up the charge on either side. Um, well, this time my charge on my left hand side is minus two. And again, on the right hand side, it's just zero. There's no charge. So at this stage, I ask myself, what side needs to come down in charge? And you can see that this time it's the right hand side. The right hand side needs to go down in charge. So I add my electrons to the right hand side, then ask myself, how many do I need? Well, I'm gonna need two of them. That then brings my charge down on the right hand side by two. And so it's now minus two, which matches the left hand side. Next one is our potassium atom changing into a potassium ion. So potassium atom has no charge, so it's just K, the symbol K. And that's changing to a potassium ion. If you look at your periodic table, potassium is in group one. They form ions with a charge of plus one. Um, but when we're writing the formula, we just write plus. We don't write plus one or one plus. We just write plus. Remember, don't include ones in formula. Okay, let's think about the charge now. 
So the charge on the left hand side we can see is zero. There's no charged particles there. There's no pluses or minuses. So the charge is zero. On the right hand side it's plus one. Now we're going to add our electrons. Which side do they need to go? Well, they need to go to the side that needs to come down in charge. And this time, that's the right-hand side. I'm going to add an electron here. Think to myself, how many do I need? Well, the charge is plus one. And they, on the other side, it's zero. So it only needs to come down by one. So therefore, I only need one electron. And again, don't put a number one in front of it. Some people were putting a one there. Don't do that again in equations and in formula. We don't use number ones. Next one was fluoride ions into a fluorine molecule. It needs to be a wee bit more careful about this. So fluoride ions... Um, well, what we know about ions is that they're charged, but also that they're not diatomic when they become ions. So it's just F for fluoride. And then look to, find, look to the periodic table to find fluorine. Fluorine is in group 7. If we look to the top of the group, that means it forms a charge of minus 1. But again, we just write minus because we don't include 1s in formulas. That's converting into a fluorine molecule. That's a different word. Molecule is two or more atoms chemically bonded together. And what we know about fluorine is that it's diatomic. So we must write it as F2 rather than just F. So the second step in writing a balanced half equation is making sure the equation is balanced in terms of atoms. So you can see I've got one atom on my left, but two fluorine atoms on the right. So I need to balance that first of all by putting a 2 in front of my fluoride ions. So now my equation is balanced in terms of atoms. I need to think about the charge. So if I look at the left-hand side now, I've got fluoride ions there, each with a charge of minus 1 but you can see that I have two of them. So if I have two fluoride ions, each with a charge of minus one, that gives my left-hand side a total charge of minus two. You can think of it as two multiplied by minus one, which is minus two. On the right-hand side, I have no charges. There's no pluses, no minuses. So the overall charge is zero. You're looking really in the top right-hand corner to see, is there a plus or a minus there? If not, your charge is zero. So my charge on the right hand side is zero. So now I need to balance this equation by adding electrons. Again, which side needs to drop in charge? It's the right hand side. So I add my electrons here, then think how many do I need? Well, it needs to go down by a charge of two. So I need two electrons. Change your charge to see if it matches. Well, I've got now two electrons, each with a charge of minus one. So that is minus two. And the equation is balanced in terms of charge as well. Next one was a zinc atom changing into a zinc ion. So zinc atom, first of all, that means that it has no charge. So it's just the simple uh, symbol for the element, um, just one singular atom. So it's Zn, just be careful about the symbol. Some people were just writing Z. That's changing into a zinc ion. So let's write down the formula of zinc, first of all, Zn, and then let's have a think about the charge. Well, this 2 in brackets essentially means that the valency is 2 or that the charge is 2. But we're not told whether it's positive or negative. But what we do know is that metals always form positive ions. So it will be Zn2+. plus. Now I need to count my charge again. On the left-hand side, my charge is 0. On the right hand side my charge is plus two. I need to add my electrons now and they need to go to the side that needs to come down in charge. That's the right hand side. How many do I need? It needs to go down by two. So it, um, you need to add two electrons to the right hand side. Next one then is a bromine molecule converting into bromide ions. Again we've got to be careful about this. It says a bromine molecule that means that there's going to be more than one atom. And I know that bromine is diatomic, so I write it as Br2. That's converting into bromide ions. Bromide, now it's not diatomic anymore because it's become an ion. What's the charge in the ion? Well, I look to the top of the group. Bromine is in group 7, and they form ions with a charge of minus 1. But again, we don't include that 1. We just write it as Br- when I'm writing the formula.
Next step is to balance in terms of the atoms. We've got to check that it's balanced. You can see I have two bromines on the left, but only one bromine on the right. So I need to put a big two in front of my bromide ions. Let's think about the charge now. On the left hand side, there's no pluses and minuses. That means that the charge is zero. On the right hand side, I have two bromide ions, each with a charge of minus one. So that's 2 multiplied by minus 1, which is minus 2 in total. Time to add the electrons, and I need to be careful about this. Which side do I add it to? I added them to the side that needs to go down in charge, which in this case is the left-hand side needs to go down. How many do I need? Well, it needs to go down by 2, so I must need 2 electrons. So that makes the charge on the left hand side minus 2 and you can see that that matches. Finally then the, the last one is chromium ion converting into a chromium atom. So let's have a think about what we mean by a chromium ion. First of all I know that it's charged because it says ion um, and what does this little 3 in brackets mean? So you can see there's three lines there. Again, be careful that you count those properly. Some people were writing two. Chromium has the symbol CR. We can see that there's three lines in there. So that means the charge is three. And again, because it's a metal, it's forming a charge of three plus. That's converting into a chromium atom, which is simply just CR with no charge. What's the charge on either side? Well, on the left hand side, the charge is plus three. On the right hand side, the charge is zero. So ask yourself, which side do the electrons need to go on? They need to go on the left hand side because that needs to come down in charge. And how many do I need? I need a total of three electrons to bring the charge down by three. But let's check that out. Why does that cancel out? Well, it's because you've got a charge of three plus from your chromium and three times minus one from your electrons. So they essentially cancel out and your charge is zero. And that shows you that your equation is balanced in terms of charge. So just remember your steps, write your reactant product, check that it's balanced in terms of atoms, pick which side you're adding your electrons to. It's the side that needs to go down in charge and then think about how many you need to add.